gosh, look at you. You're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. Look at these luscious leaves. Tell your friends that I'm a good parent. How about that? How about you tell all your friends? Because some of them don't want to pay attention. But look at you. I thought for sure you were going to die. And you were like, no, no. Look at that little baby leaf. Oh my God. Okay. This is probably why the string of pearls died is because you, it just couldn't compare. It couldn't compare to y'all. That's, I, you know what? I'm great. Yeehaw! And this shit slaps. This is a YA book. This is a young adult book. And when I tell you people are getting mowed down left and right, am I okay? The answer, the short answer is absolutely not. If Finnick O'Dare is not too cool to go to therapy, then literally what is your excuse? I'm screaming, I'm screaming, I'm screaming Suzanne, which kills the nest of flesh eating rats inside. Flesh eating rats, Suzanne, am I the only one? shaking in my boots. Am I the only one? And we have an epilogue that nobody asked for. Anyway, um, well, the publisher. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hello, Katie Colson here. Welcome to, or welcome back to my channel. And I am so excited to be bringing you this video finally, because me and my patrons have been working on this series of three books over the last three months. So in May, we just finished Mockingjay. And in June, I'm coming out with this video. And I think tomorrow is the day that we're going to be discussing it all together. And I'm so excited. And I do believe we're about to start a buddy watch along of the movies as well which as far as my recollection when i watched them in high school they were five out of five stars absolutely amazing as well as the series five out of five stars absolutely amazing so i read this in a span of three days in high school i had not read anything in a long time other than things in school and i saw the trailer for the movie and was like this looks amazing so i got my mom to go out to walmart and pick me up the paperback of the hunger games i ended up reading it in one day and when she got home from work at like she, it was like 10 p.m i was like we need to go to walmart right now we went and the only thing they had was the large format edition of catching fire and i didn't care i was like buy it and then mockingjay had just come out and i picked that one up in hardback as well because that was the only way it was available so i had three completely different formats of the books, but I ended up finishing Mockingjay the next day. And I remember being flabbergasted, like flummoxed, absolutely jaw on the floor, face cracked, like such a good series. I was obsessed with it and I still hold those fond memories. And I wanted to reread it to make sure that it held that high esteem and high value in my mind and that it wasn't something that if I read it today, I wouldn't enjoy it as much. So I decided to read it with my patrons so that we could all discuss it and see if there was any deeper themes or anything that maybe was problematic that we had just skimmed over because at the time we were young, uh, younger at least, and maybe were not aware of the problematic things. So that being said, this is going to have spoilers in it because one, The Hunger Games has been out since 2012. It's been out for a long time. It's been out for over 10 years. And the movies have come out. Everybody talks about it. Everybody knows about it. If you don't want to know anything about the series before going in, then one, this might not be the video for you. Two, I will have timestamps of which when I begin each of the three books. So if you've only read one of them and you want to watch that part of the video before going into the rest, you can do so. So this book has been read like 9 million times as far as Goodreads is concerned, and it has a 4.33 star rating, which is insanely high, especially for that many people to rate it. And for such a hyped series, I feel like people will be more critical on it. And for this to have a 4.33, and it came out in 2012, it's kind of saying everything you need to see or need to hear. So let's get into reading this because I know I'm going to be reading probably going to be reading a lot of quotes. I'm probably going to be just slandering Suzanne Collins because how dare she have ruined our childhood, but also thank God Suzanne Collins exists because these books are stunning. All of that being said, let's jump right in to the video. I just picked up the Hunger Games, okay? So I have a lot of different options. I own the hardcover set. I read the paperback set in high school. So it's been a minute since I've read them, all right? And I keep thinking to myself, oh my God, I read them so long ago. Books came out a while ago. What if it's like not as good as I remember? There's no way it can be as good as I remember. I don't know. And I was like, 
Maybe I should try the ebook because this will be my second ebook that I would read on this iPad. So I downloaded it and all I did was read the first chapter. And this shit slaps. It slaps. It slaps. Oh my god. I don't even know. When did this come out? I don't know. I am obsessed. This is so well written. It is so well written in such a short amount of time. Like in the first chapter, we have already figured out so much about this world. Um, in the first chapter, you find out that um, North America, there was a bunch of like fires and war and like the sea was overwhelming the land and it was um, getting rid of like resources and people were scrabbling or scrambling, you know? So they created Panem which is this capital, okay? So it's Panem, which is a capital, and it's surrounded by 13 districts. And they separate them by district to help create peace, okay? But, and they haven't gone into like what the different districts are, but okay. And then they had a revolt and District 13 tried to fight the capital to overthrow this, not monarchy, but this government, okay? Um, dictatorship. And... They started a war and they supposedly wiped out the entirety of District 13 and decided that as a warning, as a example, that every year they're going to do something called the Hunger Games and that each district has to offer up one of the kids between 12 and 18, one girl and one boy, and put their names in this giant ball. And then the escort for the district will pick them randomly and those two kids have to go to the Hunger Games, which is basically they're dropped in this like giant forest or tundra mountain something and told to fight to the death. And then it's televised and it's hugely publicized. And whoever wins is like the champion and gets riches and like food for life and set for life and all this stuff. What are you talking about? And it's such an interesting look at capitalism and consumerism and government and military and just how all of this stuff is weaponized to change and manipulate the way that you think and like Suzanne Collins is not pulling punches this is a young adult book and it has so much to say I'm on chapter one and it is so much to say literally they've already called out that the um it's called tesserae. I'm, I'm forgetting how you pronounce it, but it's basically the amount of times that your name goes into this drawing. And there's one for every time that you're in the drawing for the Hunger Games, which means when you're 12, you go in once. When you're 13, you go in twice. But you can like buy these tesserae or whatever for a year's worth of grain for one person. So the people in District 13 are starving or sorry, District 12, where Katniss, our main character is, they're starving. So basically, the kids have to buy this tesserae every year um, for how many family members they have. And since Katniss has a sister and a mom, both of which do not bring in anything and do not bring in any food, she has to every year buy three of them. So that means four every year. So her name is going in there a lot more than other people, as well as her friend, Gail, who has a bunch of family, and he had his name is going in there 42 times, which is a lot because a lot of other people their maximum going in five times when they're 18. So that's really sad. And Gail already pointed out in the first chapter that he was like, The Tesserae is the government um, manipulating us and forcing us to divide each other because it makes us hate each other because he's like, it's not our fault that we're poor and we have to get this tesserae. And it's not um, the mayor's daughter's fault that she doesn't have to buy this tesserae and that she's only going into the um, the drawing like five times compared to my 42. That's not her fault, but I can't help but hate her because she doesn't have to deal with what I have to deal with. And it's not our fault. It's the government's fault. And I was like, oh my God. Brilliant. I also want to highlight Katniss's just ballsiness. Like she, okay, this was in the prime time of the not like other girls trope. And Katniss is the only character that's ever done it right. Like done it right. Like she literally, she's like not like other girls, but in the most amazing way. Like literally she'll be like, oh, the, the cat, Buttercup, her sister's cat. She was like, oh, he doesn't like me because I think he remembers when I tried to drown him when he was a kitten. And you're like, what? And then she like kind of explains like, oh, well, he was another mouth to feed and I didn't have food for him. And I was like, you're a main character in a young adult book 
in the first chapter tells me she tried to kill a cat one time. What? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna keep reading, but I had to pop in because I did not think that this was gonna be as good as it is. Like, I thought that it was, I didn't think it was gonna live up to my previous hype, but so far it's superseding it. I've already teared up like four different times. And I just got to chapter four. Like, I swear, when PETA's father comes to visit Katniss, it's so good. It's like two sentences and it's so good. Oh my God. Okay, so where we are now, Prim, Katniss's sister, was chosen for the Hunger Games and she volunteers herself as tribute, which is like very rare for poor districts. And then PETA, who's the baker's son, also gets reaped to be in the Hunger Games. And Katniss is like, of course it had to be him. Like one of the people that I actually like have a fondness for. Not that she's ever spoken to him, but because when her father passed away a long time ago and she was starving, he purposely burnt some bread so that he would have to toss it. And really he gave it to her so that, she, that her and her family wouldn't starve. Never said anything, but did that. And she's never forgotten about it. And clearly neither has he. And she's like, I'm gonna have to kill this guy. But she, this is why I'm like, Katniss is not like other girls. It's literally in her head. She's like, well, there's a lot of other people that there's 24 of us that are gonna be competing. Hopefully one of them will kill him and I won't have to do it. And I'm like, I love this book. I love this. I'm telling you right now, there is literally no way this is not getting five stars. And I just got to chapter 11. What time is it? It's almost 1 a.m. It's like this close to 1 a.m. I probably should go to sleep because I've been reading for a long time, but I just got to chapter 11. This book is so good. It's so good. Literally like, <sighs> okay, like she's about like, okay, what? Let me just say, PETA, so far as now, I know people really hate PETA. I, I don't hate him. I don't hate him. I mean, I'm, maybe I do and I just don't remember, but I don't hate him. Um, he is a little bit more like, basic or a little bit more weak than Katniss, but he knows it. And that's what I respect about him is he's not like, well, I'm a man. So I'm going to like be able to do this more than you. He's like, no, I know I'm not as good as you. I'm not. So I'm going to give you the winning hand because at least somebody that I know can win rather than both of us dying. And I really respect that like a lot. And the fact that, oh my God, I can't like him. <laughs> Oh whatever they're put, being put into like little tunnels to be shot up to like go into the games and Senna the her designer that she has had to like make her look presentable to all these sponsors and um watchers Senna is like I'm not allowed to vote but if I could I would vote on you and she's like really and he's like yeah like Go out there and kill it, girl on fire. And it's just so, like, oh my God. I just love Cinna. Cinna is just such a well-done character where he's, he doesn't say that he doesn't agree with the Capitol, but you can tell in his silence, in his stance. Like, even reading it, even when it's not written on the page, you can tell that this man is rooting for Katniss and that he is against the Capitol, against the games. He's against all of this. But he knows that, you know, designing and fashion is his passion and he doesn't want to die or, you know, live in poverty. So he lives this life as calmly and quietly as he can. And I just, I love this. It's so good. And literally, like, I know that chapter 11 starts with the Hunger Games and, like, I should go to sleep. But the Hunger Games are about to start, like... How am I supposed to sleep? You know what I'm saying? I swear to you that it is a different day. I swear to you. I don't know why I always feel like I need to say this because it happens in every single vlog. It's a different day, but I just wear the same clothes over and over and over again. And also like, this is Kayla's book like merch. So oh, it would be honestly like a crime if I didn't wear this at every given opportunity. But I am on chapter 13. I have my headphones in because I realized there's a couple things I realized from a couple days ago when I was reading this book 
that would make the experience better. And it's that one on Libby, you can't do the endless scrolling or the continuous scrolling, which I've heard so many people talk about. And it really is a game changer. It really is. Like, I did not know what I was missing, but the continuous stroll, scroll, stunning. So what I did was I've read like a third of the book on Libby and I've highlighted all through it. So I'm gonna like obviously keep that until I finish the book so that I can go in the physical one and highlight everything and tab. But I actually got a Kindle Unlimited subscription. We're gonna test it out. I'm gonna try it for two months see what I think, and then see what I want to do about that. But the Hunger Games, at least the first one, is available uh, free with the membership. So I got that. I haven't read anything yet, but I was just like clicked for the continuous scroll to be on. And then I also realized that what I had done the other day was I was watching a Dark Academia ambiance, like lo-fi ASMR YouTube videos while I was reading and I really enjoy that but I realized that having it through my headphones is actually way more productive for me because I need that like immersive experience to focus on the book so that's what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna try to read a chapter I got home from work and it's pretty late like it's almost 1am and I'm really tired so I don't know how much I'm gonna read but I'm gonna read at least a chapter oh my god it's a new outfit. Can you even believe it? Like, did I take a shower today? Am I a clean laundered girly? What? I was on call at work today and bless the powers that be, I did not get called in. So I am determined to finish Hunger Games today. Determined. Okay. I still have like 180 pages or something, but I'm determined. I'm going to use this day off and I will finish this book and I am loving it. I'm loving it. I'm on chapter 20. I will say I am remembering that I do not care for the romance, but it's not because I don't like PETA. I don't understand the PETA hate. I think he's a good person. And I think that he's honestly very good at playing this game of like the pretend romance or whatever, which like to him, it's not so pretend, but like, you know what I'm saying? Playing it up for the sponsors and everything. He's good at it, at least from what I'm remembering. But I am a very firm believer in, I think that Katniss should have been alone. Like, not like, oh my God, she doesn't deserve to love, but I don't think that love was like what she was wanting, you know, in my opinion. I think that she should have not gotten with anybody, but whatever. I'm going to continue reading and hopefully I'll hit you back up later, either with more progress or when I'm done. I jumped on reading spreads with Pia from Pia La Placa, who is one of my patrons and also a booktuber and she's so awesome. I read a lot during those friends. I was there for like three hours, I think. And I got to chapter 27. I don't know why I'm, ch I'm holding my hand over this. Like we're not talking about spoilers this whole time, but I got to chapter 27, which is the last chapter, but it says I'm only 80% of the way through the book. And like, let me show you how far I am in the book. The math simply doesn't math. Like that doesn't make any sense. I'm going to swing you back around. Sorry for the vertigo. Um, I love it. I love it. I think it's fantastic. I think if you have not read this book, why? Like it holds up to this day. This is a book that it was definitely like a big YA classic of its time. And it holds true. I think that if you have never read this before and you read it today, you would give it five stars, at least four stars. I think there, the only thing about this that is making it not have a five-star feeling, even though it is the five-star book, the only con is the Peta and Katniss romance because I do not care for it. I just don't think it's good. I get why it's necessary, but I just don't like it. But everything else about this book is so good. I, I don't have anything else to say. I'm gonna read the last chapter and I'll get back to you. So I had a couple clips of me discussing in depth this book, The Hunger Games. Um, where are those clips? Fuck if I know. Fuck if I know. I have no idea. I have searched high and low. And what I think happened is that there is two clips or three of me in the same outfit that I was in when I reviewed this book. I had done a thumbnail for a different video in that outfit. And I have those clips in my Hunger Games folder of the thumbnail posing, you know? Um, but I don't have the clips of me reviewing the book. So I'm pretty sure what I did was I deleted the wrong clips. 
and it was three months ago. So you know I've emptied my trash since then. I have searched. I don't know where they are. So anyway, LOL. Um, you can probably already tell that I love the book. I gave it five stars. It was amazing. Uh, I don't know what else I can say. I know I said a lot. There was a lot of things I said. Um, if I haven't already said it, one thing that I know that I talked about when I reviewed this book is that I really like that Suzanne Collins, um, the themes thematically of the government and capitalism, consumerism, um, the social media culture, um, all of these things is so prevalent, especially like gun control and abortion laws, because basically the way that the Hunger Games is acting is kind of the way that these abortion laws are being, are acting like, oh, in our current day, it's like, oh, well, if you get pregnant, like you, you can't have an abortion, you have to have a baby. But once the baby's born, they don't care about it anymore. And they're not, they don't want to do anything to help the child or the mom. And that felt kind of Hunger Games-esque where they do not care about these kids. They are just using these kids as um, victims, you know, and that's a big thing with like gun control where the America, let's, let's be honest. Okay. And I know this is a hot topic, but they don't care about children the way that they claim to because they refuse to do anything about gun control. And so many kids die every day because of mass shootings. And it just felt very Hunger Games adjacent. And I know that I went to a, into a lot of depth and into a lot of statistics when I filmed this for the first time. And I don't, I don't remember what those are specifically anymore. And I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> I don't want to be wrong. So yeah, that is something I know I talked about and then I wanted to relay again. I don't remember what else I said. So let's just get into me reading Catching Fire because I know this video is going to be really long no matter what I do. So sorry about that. Let's get in to the second book. It has been a minute. Well, technically it's been a month, okay? But what I will say is as far as I am now, so I'm on page 182, but let me tell you, like Suzanne Collins, she did that for us. She did that for us. Like I feel so bad. I feel so bad for this YA generation because nothing is this, nothing is Hunger Games nothing like it is jam-packed of action when I tell you that I'm not even halfway through and we're already talking about district 13 we are the um 75th quarter quell has already been announced and uh we've already talked about that it's gonna be that the quarter quell is a hunger games that's picked from the previous victors like that was such a that was a wig snatch like that that my face cracked I was like I knew it was gonna happen because I've read these books before and I've seen the movies before and I was like and then, oh my God, look, dude, when I tell you, I just set the book down and I was like, is when, oh my God, they go to District 11, Rue's district. And it's so sad. Like they, um, this one older gentleman, like this old guy in the crowd, he whistles the mocking Jay tune that Rue would whistle. And then everybody in unison does the thing, which is like their, their world's symbol of like goodbye and respect um and they all do that for Katniss and it's so heartwarming and it's so unifying and she doesn't think anything about it she's like oh this is just like you know they're 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 happy or they're respecting me because of how I treated Rue even though she was supposed to be an enemy and then when I tell you the second the second that the little parade thing is over and Katniss is like, oh, I forgot something. She turns back and the peacekeeper knocks the guy to his knees, knees and shoots him in the head right in front of her. This is a YA book. This is a young adult book. And when I tell you people are getting mowed down left and right, that's what I'm talking about. Like Susan Collins, like what, the, what are you talking about? Oh my God. Like literally the riots, they're talking about like the riots in district eight and, um, like whenever they're there and they see the cutaway in the Capitol to District 8 and it's literally people revolting and setting buildings on fire and um, trying to take out these peacekeepers. Um, and then these peace peacekeepers that are just mowing them down with artillery. And it's just freaking insane. And then the thing that I love is that you get um, whenever the crew, like the fashion crew comes to make Katniss like more presentable for going to the Capitol again and they say that they haven't been able to get seafood and she's like 
hmm, why? Is it because it's out of season? And they're like, oh my God, haven't you heard? Like District 4, where you get seafood. Um, they're like, they've been having terrible weather for weeks. And Katniss is like, you haven't been able to get seafood for weeks? Huh. And she's like, uh, I'm pretty sure that means that they're also revolting. And then she's asking more questions like, is there anything else that you've been lacking? And they're like, oh, um, digital, digital gadgets from District 8 because they're revolting and like all these different stuff. And she basically figures out that half of the districts are revolting and rising up. And I'm like, oh my God. It's just, as the reader, I'm reading this like, oh my God, I just feel like such pride. Like, I'm like, oh my God yes like get it like they are killing it and i'm like oh my god and i at first i was like oh my god why is district 12 not rising up because you know them and district 11 get treated like shite but then she asks hamish and hamish is like because we're the smallest district like every other district that's rising up has a vast population compared to the peacekeepers but with us we were guaranteed to be slaughtered and put in our place so you know it, it's much harder for us to revolt and then also there's a moment where um these peacekeepers come to Katniss's house and she was out in the woods which you know is illegal and they want to catch her in the act and she gets back from being out in the woods and they're like so where have you been and the what the scene is so fucking hilarious it's so funny because she starts lying and like kind of like in the Hunger Games of the first book where she's not a very good liar and she's not a good actor, but Peeta is, is that she goes to lie about where she's been and none of them in this house know where she's been. None of them. But she's like, well, I'll tell you where I haven't been. I haven't been going to meet the goat man to see about like impregnating Prim's goat because you told me the wrong address to Prim. And I think it's so funny that she addresses Prim, who is like the youngest and most like genteel and like innocent, but she immediately, when I tell you the acting chops that this girl puts on, immediately she's like, no, I didn't. I told you the right address. And the, the back and forth between them where she just immediately is sly, is cunning, okay? And then Hamish pops in and is like, yeah, she told you that last night. Like you, you weren't even listening. And Peta's like, this is your problem. I've been telling you, you don't listen to people when they talk. And they're all laughing and kicking. And I'm like, this is what I mean by teamwork makes the dream work. I'm obsessed. I, I forgot this, but District 13, when those people that escaped from District 8 are like, we think District 13 is still out there. And Katniss is like, what are you talking about? Like they just like mined for ores or something. I don't remember what they mined. And they're like, no, they were doing nuclear experimentation. And she's like, but they had these mines. And she's like, yeah, only a couple. And why would that be a necessity for how large of a population they were? It doesn't make sense. And I was like, and that the capital's scared of them because they have nuclear weapons. I'm sorry, I'm going on and on and on. But anyway, I'm um, almost halfway through it and I'm loving it. So I might be hitting you back up as I binge speed read this, or I might be hitting you up saying that I put a pause on the live show and I waited. Anyway, goodbye for now. Okay, so clearly um, I did not finish the book in time for the live show. I am on page 318 and it's like almost 6 p.m. and I was supposed to start the live show an hour ago. Oops. <laughs> so I'm postponing it for two days. But I did end up buckling down and started listening to the audiobook. And while I don't like the narrator, it's good. Like the audiobook isn't good, but the story is so good that it really doesn't dampen it. And because I already know how I picture the characters and I already know how I picture their voices sounding, it doesn't bother me all that much. And it is taking so long to read it because I have to pause like every 10 seconds because, oh my God, like I'm going to have to go through and reevaluate this tabbing system because there's got to be tabs that I can take out. I have also cried like four times already. Cinna. It's like, here's the thing. It's like, I know it's going to happen, but it's been so long since I've read the books. It's been so long since I've seen the movies. I mean, it hasn't been that long, but it feels like forever. And I'm like, ah, like I knew what was going to happen to Cinna, but I like let myself forget a little. And then, oh my god, Cinna, that was so fucking sad. Okay, so that fucking got me. And then, oh my god, what was another one? Um, Mags. And Finnick. Finnick, when he, I've cried so fucking hard when Finnick is like, I'm sorry, Mags, I can't carry you. And oh my gee, he has to leave her to die. It's so sad. Oh my god. 
And what's more is that I know, even though Katniss doesn't know, sorry, I'm on live stream and like people are watching me film right now. Um, Katniss doesn't know, but I already know because I've read the books before, is that the reason that Mags is willing to die is because they all decided that they had to do whatever they could to keep Katniss alive because Katniss and Peeta are the symbol of the revolution. And if they die, the revolution dies and there won't be a revolt. And so Finnick is like tasked to be her bodyguard basically. And then whenever Peeta gets attacked by one of these um, monsters and he's about to die, one of the morphlings, which is like a, a drug addict, um, one of the victors throws herself in front of him and the monster kills her or bites her um, fatally. And Katniss is like, why would she do that? Like, not only like a victor, and they're in the games, but someone who's like insanely addicted to drugs. So it's like she not only put aside that she's going to die because she's saving someone else's life in the Hunger Games, someone she doesn't know, except for media-wise, um, but also her drug addiction. Where it's like, that's the only thing that usually she would think about. And oh my God, when she's dying and she was a painter and she's painting with her blood on Peta's face, like a flower. And he's like, thank you, that's beautiful. And she smiles before she dies. Oh my God, it was so sad. So sad, oh my God, okay. Anyway, when I tell you this is action packed, oh my fucking God, it's action packed. Like every page, somebody's dying. Like how is this a YA book? Anyway, I'm gonna get back to it while I organize this absolute clutterfuck <laughs> that I've got going on because I just got a big box of medical supplies that I've been waiting for for a long time. And now I have to reorganize my entire Alex Six drawers because they no longer fit in here the way I had it. Okay, anyway, let me go back to crying and reading Catching Fire. Um, a camera angle that isn't trash? Oh, we don't know her. We don't know her. Okay, it is the front-facing camera, so sorry if I kind of, like, divert my eyes a little bit, you know? But when you look this stunning, how can you not look at yourself? Like, am I wrong? Like, hello. And I need to tell you that I finished Catching Fire, and I should have talked to you last night because I have so many feelings about this. And then I went and I watched um, videos of people reacting to the movie. And I love that they show the movie in the corner because, oh my God, the movies are so good. They're so good. Like I was living vicariously through them. And here's the thing. I know I've said this so many times, but I cannot believe that this is YA. I can't believe it. Like if this came out right now, I would be like five mother stars oh my god like there's so much death and gruesome and political debauchery in this book like it is freaking insane war just like political crimes espionage it's so good and i think that it's so funny to me that we were out here reading this book in middle school and high school and people were worried about banning harry potter for witchcraft oh my god and then oh my god whenever um they find Joanna and BT and Wyrus and they're covered in like red they're like oh that's like red goo and they're like oh it started raining and we thought it was rain, but it wasn't. It was blood. And it was it's raining blood. And it's and they said that like it blinded them and filled their mouth and they like couldn't see and couldn't breathe. And I was like, that's horrifying. That's horrifying. And then the other one, oh my god, what did I tell you? That from where I talked to you last, I was on 318. So the games don't start until like page like 300 like I swear like the, literally the games are only like this much of it and so much happens in those pages like um the whole game is a clock and every hour is a different nightmare and one of the hours is um the jabber jays which are basically kind of like mocking jays that mimic what they hear and Katniss hears her sister Prim screaming for help so she runs into the woods and it's basically like a nightmare like a emotional torture but the thing is um like Finnick hears Annie and uh, Katniss hears Prim, and the other the others were like, "It's not them; it's just a jabber jay." And Finnick is like, "Yeah, but they mimic what they hear. So how did they get those screams?" And then Peta's like, "No, they just manipulated it." And BT's like, "Yeah, they can do that easily." But we never actually get confirmation in this book if that's true or not, which I'm pretty sure it is based on what I'm remembering. Anyway, I need to tell you about my absolutely unhinged tabbing system. Also, I kind of would just want to put these without the dust jackets because I think they're even prettier without the dust jackets. Okay, let me show you. Am I okay? Am I okay? The answer, the short answer is absolutely not. Are you kidding me right now? 
Like, I think this might be my new personality. Like, I'm obsessed. So I changed the color coding system, and then I also changed it so that the tabs, there's like a tabbing system so that they all line up so that they don't overlap each other. And then here's the tabbing on this one. They're the same thing. They just look like a little different with the header. And this one. Okay, so red, just like the other one, is Katniss is truly the definition of not like other girls. Like she is that main character. She is that bitch. She's amazing. Uh, gray is for revolution or the war or like the plan. So basically like our side of the war. Whereas this like pale beigey color is for the other side, the capital, the other side of the war. And then this um, purpley color is Katniss is asexual and I will fight you on it. Like there are so many, you can't tell of these purple tabs because when people are like oh my god no like team gail team Peta, i'm like she's asexual and i literally swear to god if i asked suzanne collins she would say yes and the fact that like she said in many interviews that she did not want there to be a romance at all but the publisher made her do it okay um anyway uh the facts are stacking up that's all i'm saying and then orange is for friends slash team like anytime it's like oh my god oh y'all are friends or like oh teamwork like or funny and then blue is i'm crying because yes, I did cry quite a few times. Here we go. And you know what I'm gonna say? I feel like I like Catching Fire even more than Mockingjay. And I never say that because I love the setting up of a world, but when I tell you this one is bat crazy, it is bonkers. So good. Okay, look how good I look with these books. Okay, thank you for coming to my TED Talk and I'll hit you back next month with Mockingjay. Um, hi, it is the next day. And last night, I swear I was going to pop in after reading a little bit, but I watched four hours of Jordan Reed's reading sprints and I got to page 170. So that's what we're dealing with. I love this book. I was really afraid. Well, I still am because we're not done, but a lot of people do not like Mockingjay and I don't remember disliking it when I read them the first time. And I don't remember disliking the ending of the movie series either so I'm a little worried and I know that a lot of people say that they don't like that Katniss is like boring in this one or that they don't like the way her character changes but here's the thing Katniss in my opinion not being a therapist not being a psychoanalyst not being someone who has studied or has any actual experience with grief of this magnitude or with PTSD I do not, so I'm not the person to speak on it, but from my limited point of view, I think that Katniss is a really good depiction of PTSD and trauma and grief because it's very realistic in my purview. She is fucked up. The things that she's seen and dealt with and gone through and been made to do, it is, honestly, it is such a huge feat of humanity, that she is still alive, that she is capable of coherent thought, that she is not just a sobbing, screaming mess, that she is not a shell of a human being. Like, also, I love that Finnick O'Dair is seen as being like even more broken than Katniss is because, listen, here's the thing. Finnick is the capital golden boy. He is the YA dream boy. If Finnick O'Dare can go to therapy, if Finnick O'Dare is not too cool to go to therapy, then literally what is your excuse? That's what I feel like Suzanne Collins is saying. And I love her for that. Okay. I have a couple things to say of the hundred and so pages that I've read since last time. One is that I swear to God, I knew it was, I knew it was gonna happen because I remembered it. But when they find her, her prep team, that was so sad. I have such a soft spot for Octavia. I don't know why, but I just love her so much. And when they find them like chained up in the basement, being like literally tormented and treated so horrifically. And they're like, well, they stole, they stole food. You can't steal food. And they're like, Octavia stole a piece of bread, one piece of bread. She didn't realize it. It was like stealing. She's starving. And then Katniss thinks about when um, Octavia like, stole her a piece of bread um, on the train because she was so sad for her having to go back into the games and about how they all like basically had to quit on her prep team because they couldn't stop crying. And the fact that like um, Gail gets into an argument with Katniss and is like, are you saying that you feel bad for them? Like they're capital people, like who cares? Like coin 
President Coyne, this president of District 13, they're like, oh, she probably thought she was doing you a favor. And Katniss does defend them, but kind of like feels the ick that she's defending them, which makes total sense, makes total sense, because they have been, the Capitol has been the bad guy this entire time, and she's defending people from there and is like, they didn't know any better. And he's like, oh, when they cheered uh, of all these tributes dying every year, they didn't know that that was a bad thing. And she's like, it's different for that. Like they didn't realize how messed up it was. And I think that that's really powerful image of like coin doing this to them and her mom seeing it like Katniss's mom seeing it. And we get it through Katniss's mom's point of view seeing, wow, even in district 13, people are treated this way. Like even though they have their own government, like their own form of power and like monarchy, this stuff still happens. And it's a really good image of like, or a really good depiction of it's not that it is the capital in its entirety that's bad. It's that there are bad people everywhere and there are good people everywhere and there are bad systems and, well, there's not really good systems to be honest, but that there's bad people in District 13. And that is something that like, obviously I remember from the series is that President Coin is also a terrible person and very greedy. And so is President Snow. And I do think it's interesting that as of like page 172, I thought that President Coyne's introduction, I was like, she just comes out of nowhere. Like maybe I'm forgetting, I don't know. But Katniss basically wakes up and we're just made to understand that President Coyne is just like a thing and she's just there. And we don't really get a lot of interactions with her. She doesn't really say anything, but you know, I'm, I mean, I guess I am almost halfway through the book. So that I feel like is a little bit of a shortcoming that we're like almost done with this series. And I don't feel like we get the emotional or logical storyline impact of how terrible President Snow is, or how President Coin is, because we get President Snow. But knowing how this is gonna end, I feel like we need more coin. But I do also think that something that's really interesting is the depiction of Katniss and Gale being like, two different minds in the war. And it's almost, I feel like for the Enneagram, <laughs> if you saw like a type eight and a type six, how you're like, okay, they act the same, but they're coming from different reasonings and different points of view. And it's so fascinating because Gail is coming from the point of view of anger, just rage. And he wants to destroy everything about the Capitol, like everything about it. And he does not take a moment to empathize for other points of view and other perspectives where Katniss has seen other perspectives and she has been placed into situations where she has had to look the other side in the eye and be next to them for an extended amount of time. So she feels like almost like a forced empathy for them where Gail doesn't. So Gail doesn't mind killing. He doesn't mind, like literally he wants to wipe out the entirety of the Capitol and all of um, District 1 and 2 where Katniss is like, no, I just want to destroy the system. I don't want to kill the people, you know? But I do think one thing, that being said, Katniss is not like other girls. I swear to God, I love that when she is making her demands to be the Mockingjay, that she's like, I have one final demand. I get to kill President Snow. And I swear one moment, I was like, actually, that was badass. That was actually badass. Like the one moment where I'm like, coin? Coin, that was great. Is that coin almost smiles, like a little hint of a smile when Katniss says that. And she goes, I'll flip you for it. I was like, boom, but that was badass. That was badass. I freaking love that. And I love that um, when coin is like, what if you get, um, what if you get killed? And Katniss's response is make sure to get it on film. I love this book so much. I love this so much. Like this is already five stars. It's already five stars. I really hope it ends as a five star because I truly believe it does. Um, and I want to be able to tell y'all that you're wrong for disliking this book. So I'm gonna keep reading and I will let you know what I think about, well, I better hit you back up before the end. Okay, anyway, back to reading. I forgot about this happening until it happened, but Boggs, the man we've grown to love, and you know, you know he's gonna get got because we've grown to love him. So it says, positioning the hollow to find the best light in the smoky air, still facing us as his left foot steps back onto the orange paving stone, triggering the bomb that blows off his legs. I 
I was a sophomore in high school when I read that. I was a sophomore in high school. This is why millennials are built different. This is why millennials are built different, okay? And then on the next page, our 16-year-old protagonist, or probably 17 at this point, um, Katniss Everdeen, I scramble around, digging through chunks of tile, slick with blood, shuddering when I encounter bits of warm flesh. I was about to say I'm unwell. I really think Suzanne Collins is unwell. I think she's unwell. Like, <laughs> It's crazy. And you know what is I also know, so that happens to Boggs. I don't remember if Boggs dies, but I do know that in this last bit, okay, I'm on page 277 and there's 390 pages. So in 113 pages, 123 pages, whatever. Anyway, uh, 113 pages. I know a lot of people die really graphically. And I'm like, damn, she really fits a lot into this. Like, I'm trying to think like, I can remember, of what I can remember, there are five people I know named characters that are going to die in the next, like, hundred pages. That's wild. And we have an epilogue that nobody asked for. Anyway, um, well, the publisher. <clears throat> anyway, okay, I'm gonna get back to reading, but, like, I'm on Patreon Spence right now, and they're watching me just, like, lose my shit. I'm screaming. I'm screaming. I'm screaming. Suzanne. <sighs> Miss Collins. I'm sitting on the floor, okay? This is the angle you're getting because I'm currently losing my mind, okay? This is all you're able to see of me because this is all I want to be able to be seen. <sighs> what the <laughs> Okay, so yeah, Boggs gets his legs fucking blown off. <laughs> There's a lot of shit that's happening. And then um, there's this one guy that he gets like the, the sludge, like seals him and it's just his hand and the gun pointing out of the sludge. Oh, okay. Empty now of everything but us. I swing up my bow and blow up the first pod with an explosive arrow, which kills the nest of flesh-eating rats inside. Flesh-eating rats. Suzanne! Suzanne, God have mercy on me and my soul. Okay. Then I sprint for the next intersection where I know one false step will cause the ground beneath our feet to disintegrate, feeding us into something labeled meat grinder. I'm sorry, is your name Suzanne Collins or is it Sweeney Todd? Like, what are we doing right now? Okay, that happens right there. Boom. We're not even half the page down, okay? <sighs> Masala gets caught in this beam of light. And you're like, a beam of light? Okay, the beam of light is so strong that this is what it does. Inside, Masala is all is as still as a statue, poised up on the ball of one foot, head tilted back, held captive by the beam. I can't tell if he's yelling, although his mouth is stretched out wide. We watch utterly helpless as the flesh melts off of his body like candle wax. Am I the only one? shaking in my boots. Am I the only one? I want to know what Suzanne Collins' house looks like. I want to know what her style is. I want to know what she decorates her house like. What does she think is cute? Because I know what she thinks is crazy. This is... Flesh melts off of his body like candle wax. I need to stop. I need to go clean something. There are a lot of crimes that you need... There's a lot of crimes you need to atone for, Collins. But Finnick, I will not forgive that. I will not forgive that. I don't want to hear an apology. I don't want to hear an explanation. No, just, just, just go and sit down. Susan Collins needs to pay for the therapy for multiple generations. The way that she has scarred human lives and souls. Prim. Like, I, I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. I knew how it happened. I remembered every moment. Still cried. Still cried because of the... The untucked shirt. Oh, my God. The, the duck tail. That fucking guy. And the fact that she sees her, like, catches her eye. Just like Rue. And goes to say her name. I've literally got fucking goosebumps. I've got goosebumps. The fact that we knew, we knew... 
because of Gail. This was Gail's that hasn't been said yet, but we knew, and that's the whole thing that she does to make it so that she has to pick Peta instead of Gail because she can never look at Gail again because he is the reason that her sister dies because Gail says that one of his tactics, his schemes, is that they are going to bomb the children and then when people go to save the children, they will bomb the actual targets, which is the parents. But it doesn't go right because they bomb the children. And then the rebel medics come in instead of the parents. And the rebel medics, prim. It could have been her mom. I, th I That's so fucked up to say that, but like, it could have been her mom. It didn't have to be prim. What does this girl have to live for? What does Katniss have to live for at this point? Like, literally, because do not sit there and fucking look me in the eye and say, Peta, Malark. I'm so close to the end of this book, and I don't know if I can finish it tonight because I am emotionally, like, drunk. I am emotionally wasted. Like, I am wrecked. I... I'm just coming at you with raw emotions after finishing this book. There are so many things that happen at the end of this book that are so depressing, especially when it comes to Katniss's mental health or lack thereof. But the depiction that it never goes away, that she says that she wakes up screaming for the rest of her life is so realistic um, and heartbreaking and like Prim's death. And obviously I need to say, before I get into it, I need to say that the moment where Katniss um, she, they all sit down with the remaining victors and Coin says, I propose that we have a final Hunger Games with all of the top ranking capital people's children and make them watch their kids fight each other to the death. And they say, oh, we're going to hold a vote. And Johanna and Inabaria are like, yeah, give them a taste of their own medicine. They should have to watch. Like, um, Snow has a granddaughter. And... Peta's against it, obviously. And Katniss is like, what do I do here? And she thinks in her head, she's like, you need to think about this, think about this. And she says, do it. And then Hamish is the deciding factor. And he looks at her for a while. And she's like, this is when I know whether he truly is like me. And he says, I'm with the Mockingjay. And the way that he says that, and he just looks at her and he knows that she has a plan. He knows it and goes with her. And that moment when she is set to execute Snow and she pulls the bow and at the last second, she turns it to coin and unleashes it and kills her is amazing. And that Pallor, the, the leader of District 8, is the one who becomes the de facto president. And then Plutarch is like the secretary in charge of communication. And like all of that, like really quickly gets swept up into a beautiful ending and Katniss gets sent back to District 12 because they can't find a use for her in the capital because she's so mentally unwell. And they take Gale and they put him in District 2, creating bombs and technology and stuff. But here's the thing. Hold up. I need to pause before I go into my review of Mockingjay that I filmed a couple days ago. And that's because I need to warn you that you need to give me a little bit of leeway in this next clip, okay? Because when I filmed it, I had just finished the last page and I had just started my period and it was 4 a.m. So yeah, I was a blubbering mess, okay? And I say things that I understand not everybody, not most people are gonna agree with me on and that is mainly based on the people that have seen the movies. And I wanna make it clear that throughout this entire video when I've been saying that Katniss is a sexual and aromantic uh, theory in which I completely subscribe to, I'm not talking about the movies. In the movies, I, the way that Jennifer Lawrence 
acts and portrays Katniss's relationship with PETA, I completely believe it. And I do understand everybody shipping them together. Like, I totally get it. In the books, no, not at all. Okay, so if you're a PETA and Katniss shipper, and it's about the movies, I totally get it. Because also, Hamish and Effie is a thing in the movies, and which I love, but that's not a thing in the books. Like, not even a little bit of a thing. So, you see what I'm saying? In the books, that's what I'm discussing in this next clip. Not about the movies. I also love the movies, so do watch that. But anyway, okay, let's roll into the clip, because sometimes it's funny just to laugh at ourselves. This is what fucking got me. This is what fucking got me about this book. Okay. I know I've already said many times that in my opinion, in my mind, in my canon, Katniss is asexual and aromantic and she is being forced to be put in these romantic situations that she does not understand, she doesn't agree with, um, she doesn't want, and she's just so confused and she is like a 16-year-old girl who, you know, like when I was 16... You know, I, I was put in situations, not like dire like that, but put into situ romantic situations that I didn't understand and felt compelled to go along with. And I feel like she did the same. And when she goes back to 12 and Hamish tells her that her mom isn't coming because her mom, you know, understandably cannot handle being in District 12 after the loss of her husband and watching her older daughter go through the games and then losing him. Okay, that's sad. That is sad. But this is the thing. This is what gets me, this is what's so fucking sad about this is that you get Katniss and it is said on page that she spends months, months, I want you to understand months, she doesn't change her clothes. She doesn't bathe. She only eats when Gracie Say forces her to. She spends months, she doesn't leave the kitchen. She doesn't go to a bedroom. She just spends months sitting in this kitchen. And this is what gets me, is that like, in my opinion, Katniss, as an asexual, aromantic person, loses everything and everyone in her life that actually meant something to her. She loses Prim, she loses her best friend Gail, she loses her mom. Hamish is a broken man, just like she's a broken woman, so she doesn't really have him. And when it's said that she gets together with PETA, in my opinion, it reads like, because there's nothing else to do, and that that's the thing that she can do for him to save him, is by being with him and he wants children and she says that she fights him for like 15 years and finally gives in and has kids with him what i'm seeing is that she is still broken and and gets even more broken because of society telling her that she has to love someone she has to be married she has to have kids so she does it. So she never actually gets out of the games. And that's what's so fucked up about this book is that she never gets out. She's never happy. She's never free. And listen, you can tell me that I'm like reading too much into it because she's in love with PETA, but I don't fucking believe you. I think that she loves him as a, as a friend, but not the same way that she loved Gail as a friend. I think that her and Peta have trauma bonded, but I don't think it's the same. And I don't think he understands her. And at the very end when he says, do you love me real or not real? And she says real. That broke my fucking heart because he's asking her, like, are you in love with me? And she isn't, but she responds truthfully because she loves him, but he's never going to understand her. These books are so good. They are five out of five. And yes, I will say, that things happen way too fast in this book and you do not get a second to breathe and really think about what's happening. Like it's just action, action, action and you don't get a second to be emotional. But this series is... It's 
It's so good. I don't know. I can't, I can't gather my thoughts. Whew, I need to take a minute. Was that funny or was it just sad? Cause I think it's a little bit of both, but y'all let me know. I am so glad I reread the series. I was a little afraid and I'm so glad that it not only stood up, it stood out. Like this series, I highly recommend if you have not picked this up because you think, oh, it's too late. The hype was a long time ago. It won't hold up to this day. No. If I was reading this in 2023 or even 2024, 2025, whatever, for the first time, these would be five stars. Please pick up the series. It is so freaking good. And if you are part of my Patreon, thank you. I appreciate y'all. And we've been killing it this year, literally killing it with the book, book club picks. Almost all of the book club picks this year have been five stars and three of my book club picks. And we're only five months in um, as far as the, the book club goes are going to be on my top five of 2023 books. So that's absolutely phenomenal. Okay. And if I was counting rereads, this would also be there. So if you want to follow me on Patreon, you totally could. The link is down below. You absolutely do not have to. You never have to. But if you want to, it is a cool community and it is very fun. And in June, we are doing a TBR um, readathon where I matched people together and then they are going to read books that the other person recommended. And we are going to be doing that in the future. So if you missed out this time, it will be happening again. Okay. Wow. I've been talking a lot. If you've gotten this far into the video, I want to say leave a bird emoji, but when I was looking on the emojis, there's nothing that reminds me of the Mockingjay. So you could either leave a bird or you could leave an arrow emoji if we still have one of those. Because I know they took away the gun. Anyway, leave an arrow if we have one, if not a bird. If you want to follow me on Goodreads, Instagram, wherever, they're all going to be linked down below, as well as a myriad of other links to help support this channel in many different ways. All of that being said, I hope you're having an amazing day, evening, night, dusk, dawn, whatever it is you're having in whatever part of the world you are currently having it in. And I will see you in a video coming very soon. Bye. You could try to play, but you're never gonna beat me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody and stain from the people who deceive me. Body ends break through the chains, go free me. Looking for change, looking for pain. Pulling a mob, pushing a train. I'll never stop, stick to a lane. Pick up the pieces and go rearrange. Uh, I'll be the best above all.